everybody. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. Today's guest, MHP athlete, classic physique, IFBB Pro League professional, all the way from the great state, the Lone Star State of Tejas, Logan Franklin. How are you, Logan? What's up, man? How you doing? So big, big news for you. Biggest news of your life. On May 1st, right? You, yes, became, a fa- you became a father. Congratulations. Thank you. The club. So uh, this was a pandemic baby. You know, this kid, for the rest of his life, people will be, you'll be telling him, you were born during the great pandemic of 2020. And he'll be like, oh, shut up, Dad. I don't want to hear about <laughs> that anymore. So uh, Reese Alexander Franklin, tell me, uh, tell me the story of how this birth happened. Uh, I, you know, hospitals, hospitals are kind of scary places for anybody to go to right now. But you got to have a baby. What are you going to do? Have it in your, have yeah. it in your living room? So yeah. uh, was, he, was he on time? Was he late? Was he early? Uh, he was definitely on time. Um, 40, we, she went the whole 40 weeks full term and, uh, yeah, he was born at like 8 AM in the morning, 8, 18, actually, I think it was. And, uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't as bad at the hospital as a lot of people are trying to make it out to seem. I mean, the hospital here was, it was almost empty. I mean, there was maybe another two or three other, uh, babies being born that day day i guess i don't know that, that that's just what they were saying there wasn't very many people there at all though i mean it was completely empty well you're in the maternity ward i imagine the emergency room is a different part of the hospital yeah I yeah too. i guess that yeah i guess that has something to do with it too but i mean i don't know okay so how long was labor uh honestly uh she had a c-section oh okay yeah she had a c-section she's small I mean, she's like five foot one and uh had an eight pound baby i guess pretty big wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so uh, scheduled C-section, and uh, honestly, it, it didn't take very long at all. It took like shit. It took like 15, 20 minutes. I was in there, and then he was all of a sudden he was coming out <laughs> and I mean, screaming. They, they just I, I've never I've been I've only been to two births of my kids, and they were not C-section. So yeah. they they make a large incision. They when they reach in, just pull the baby out. Uh. I mean, I wasn't really watching, you know, I was kind of just, I was just kind of, uh, uh, trying to be there for her and make sure she was staying calm and all that. And, uh, and then, you know, you hear the baby start screaming and then, you know, all the crazy, Oh, you know, he's here. And, and, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really watch, you know, the whole procedure. I mean, it, it wasn't a bother me, but I mean, I mean, I wasn't, they had like a big curtain that was like, well, she was laying on her back, and the, the curtain was was like three feet up, you know, so you couldn't even really see unless you stood up above above the uh, curtain draw. So, <laughs> oh, oh. oh, that because that was my next question. Did you watch? Because I don't think it would have been as traumatic as watching the uh, you know a regular birth out the. Uh, oh yeah, that would have been that would have been uh, uh, a little different of a story to tell. I mean, I I don't know. Um, hopefully, I don't have to experience witnessing that i mean we'll see i think she she wants to do another c-section so i mean honestly i don't know it's all it's up to her whether she wants to ha- wants to go through that way or the other way yeah okay yeah because that's one of those things that you you see it and then you can't unsee it so yeah <laughs> yeah uh, so uh did, did you did the baby come home the same day or, or was she in the hospital for a day or two uh let's see we went on in there on uh on a Friday, and then we came home on Monday. So we were there oh, like wow, three okay. days. Yeah, wow. a couple days. Did you camp out at the hospital the whole time? Um, not really. I mean, I was there for the majority of the day, and then I'd leave. We've got dogs, and so I would, I would let them out, you know, feed them, yeah. do all that stuff, and then uh, head right back to the hospital. And then uh, I didn't stay the night at the hospital. I just kind of went back home and, you know, did the same thing for the dogs. And took care of the dogs as well, made sure she was all right and brought her food when she needed some food and, and, uh, just did the back and forth thing. Right on. So the baby's home now, the baby's been home. Uh, you know, your life is different now, Logan. It's a whole different world. Yeah. The, the phrase I like to always say, cause it, it, it's so true. Me, cause Victor, Victor Martinez and me, we talk sometimes cause we both have kids. And so once you have a baby, once you have a child, your life is no longer your own because now yeah. you're really living your life your job is to protect that that kid and keep him safe from any harm and 
you know, n- nurture and do everything you can for that kid for at least 18 years, hopefully for, for his whole life, you're going to be a great dad, but at least yes. 18, 21 years, somewhere in that range, you're there. But, uh, what's, what's it been like having a baby at home? Cause you know, it's just you and your girl up until now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely different. It's, uh, every day, you know, it gets more real, you know, it's like, Whoa, he's here for real, for real. And, uh, it's just a whole different vibe, you know. It's uh, it's a uh, it's hard to explain, you know. I I, lo- I love it, you know. It's yeah. it's a uh, a great happiness. Like I don't I don't feel like any kind of stress or anything like that. I'm just, you know, going with whatever you know w- with whatever comes, if that makes how, sense. I mean, just kind of going with the flow. How are you guys uh, dividing the uh, the baby duties? What what have you been doing? Um, just like if every other diaper, I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every other diaper, or, or uh, if I'm if I'm home and I'm not at the gym, you know, I'll feed the baby. Or I don't, her her parents are in town as well, so we have a little bit of help. Okay. Uh, and my mom and my stepdad have been coming over a couple times this week, and so they've been helping a little bit as well. So uh, haven't really been alone yet. I mean, we had like a half of a day whenever we came home from the hospital, where it was just her and I and the baby, and then. You know, that evening her parents came in. So we still haven't even, you know, had one full night where it was just us three, you know. So uh, looking forward to that experience and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, <laughs> we'll see uh, if it gets any more complicated. I mean, so far it's been pretty smooth. He's been a, he's been a pretty easygoing baby, like not crying like crazy. Uh, only whenever he's he needs a diaper change or if he's hungry or something like that. Uncomfortable, yeah, you know. Or if we're changing him, you know, yeah. little things. He's a, he definitely seems to self-soothe pretty easy, I guess. Uh, so, like I said, I mean, so far it's been it's been pretty smooth, yeah. but who knows? I don't I don't know how if it's going to get worse or <laughs> if it's well, going to stay the same. You guys are going to have to have a discussion, you and Marissa, as far as uh, whether you'll do like one night, you have to get up every time the baby needs to eat, or mm-hmm. if it's going to be every other time he wakes up to eat. I, I feed, think that feed. works way better. Uh, I've actually spoken to her about it. And I, and I honestly, I think if we did every other, it gives us way more time, you know, to rest in between. I mean, because the baby's eating every two, two and a half hours, you know. So you think if we're doing every other, then you get, you know, four to five hours in between times where you have to be there. I mean, in the military, I was only getting about four to five hours of sleep a night, period. So. Okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so this is uh, probably plenty, no, no big deal. Time still get, yeah, plenty of time to still get rest. I mean, uh, I also, my full time job is the gym and staying healthy and shape and, and making sure I'm on my diet and doing all that fitness stuff and posing and yada, yada, yada. So it's not like I'm, I'm reporting to any kind of office or anybody. You know, I kind of work for myself, if that makes sense. So I can stay home, nap throughout the day if I need to, and just kind of go with it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not too many people are reporting to offices these days in general. So, yeah, until, true. until America goes back to work, uh, I wasn't going to ask you who do, who do you think who do you think your son looks more like you, Marissa, or a combination? Everybody, I mean, she likes to say he looks a lot like me, uh, but I don't. I don't know. I, I see similarities, you know, but I, I, I think he still needs to kind of develop, you know, a little bit more, get a little bit older, and then we'll start to really see his his personality and his looks like his eyes are still uh they're still like bluish yeah you know darkish bluish or or something yeah so uh the eyes haven't really changed colors yet so we'll find out by then i guess he has my my nose i don't know that's what they say (laughs) honestly i don't know i just think he looks like a cute baby (laughs) well you posted a picture the other day he's got your power he's is he already holding a bottle by himself at like a week old every now and then yeah every now and then he'll hold it uh, I think he's held the bottle three, maybe four times. Wow. But uh, uh, whenever I was, yeah, whenever I took that picture, that was literally the first time he had held the bottle with like both of his hands. And, mm. and uh, I don't know if that's fast or. I think or so. Whatnot. I think anything. It seemed pretty anything fast. where they're not just lying there like a blob at this point is pretty advanced <laughs> to doing anything. So, yeah, I'll, I'll say. Yeah. All right. So that's all the baby talk. Promise, guys, uh, all you out there watching who don't care about baby talk. <laughs> okay, we're moving in. We're moving into the meathead crap right now. So you were preparing for the Dallas Europa show, which was going to be June twentieth, um, just same day as Boston Pro. And 
I was very nervous about Boston Pro. I was nervous about your show too. I'm like, uh. sure <laughs> enough, uh, they they canceled yeah. it, right? Yeah, it's canceled, canceled, and then rescheduled for 2021. Okay, so uh, I guess you know you were looking great. You you thank you. You were, you were so ahead of schedule, condition wise, and everything. Uh, so you would have been like five weeks out today, something like that. Was it six weeks? Five uh, weeks? Something like that. Five weeks sounds about right. Okay, so yeah. you know when you got the news, what was your reaction, and what what's what's Plan B, or what are you what are you doing? What what are you what are you doing at this point? Uh, well, I mean the news it didn't really hit me that hard. I mean I already kind of halfway expected you know something to you know get canceled or you know, this this whole lockdown thing has just been lasting an eternity. It seems like way longer than anyone expected. Yeah. Um, I mean I went into the prep. Knowing that we were in lockdown, I mean, it was clear that we were dealing with some pandemic. So I, I went in knowing all this, and uh, I, but I didn't want to dwell on the fact that it might, you know, be canceled. But you know, that always sits in the back of your head. You know, I uh, wanted to go in 100%. You know, both feet in, like we spoke about it before, and uh, I wanted to be able to bring my best. You know, even if I had to deal with something like a pandemic. You know, like where you couldn't train at a gym you know, regularly or go and do fast cardio on a Stairmaster. You have to do cardio outside, sprints, whatever, walks. Yeah. Um, so I thought I was doing just fine. Uh, and like I said, the, the new, whenever, whenever it got rescheduled, it was, it was more like a, a whatever, you know, like who cares? I, 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 at this point, I'm just like, whatever, you know, uh, it's a blessing in disguise. I mean, like I said, I wasn't able to really prep and, uh, it kind of just gave myself uh, like a, a taste of what's to come, you know, of how my body's responding, how, you know, what I've done this this past off season over the over the last like seven or eight months. I've, I've it's been since the last show that I competed in in August. What has that been seven eight months or longer? Yeah. I don't even know anymore. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and count my head, but. It's been a while. It's been a while. So uh, it, was, it was August. Yeah, it was last August. Yeah. So I, I got to kind of see how my body was starting to shape up as I started to get leaner and, you know, things started moving along. But uh, uh, I just feel like it was a glorified off season, you know, a little bit more of an aggressive off season, I guess. Uh, still in that, you know, diet competition prep mode right now. Uh, so I'm still like on my diet, you know. Not not a hundred percent. I mean, I'm eating all my meals that I'm supposed to be eating. You know yeah. that my coach has me written, but I'm just adding a ton of stuff. Like I'm probably eating two, three bowls of cereal a day, two hundred grams of carbs from cereal a day alone, easy. Uh, Favorite type of cereal? What is a cereal? <laughs> oh man, I've got a few, but I like Frosted Flakes. I like uh, uh, what? What is the other one? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I like okay. Captain Crunch. And then uh, Honey Nut Cheerios has been a go-to lately, too, just because it's, it's a little bit healthier, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay. I'll, I'll get yeah, so little snacks. I'm just adding in snacks. Eating a cheat meal every freaking day. Like, I had I had a large pizza yesterday and some wings. What? and Yeah, so I, I've been eating, I've been eating uh, very, very good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking still very, very lean. What's your weight up to now? Uh, this morning, I was 232, actually. Okay. Yeah, so uh, nice and full, nice and full, and uh, just chilling, man. Not not stressed, not worrying about a diet. You know, even though I am dieting, it doesn't feel like I'm dieting. I'm just having fun, man. I'm really, uh, I'm really having fun with it. Uh, it doesn't. I'm not. I'm not in a uh, a worry state of mind. Like, oh, I have to be perfect on this and that every day. Like, like I usually am. You know, so. Just trying to enjoy it. Just trying to enjoy the process and and uh, make as much progress as I can right now. So all that being said, I think today the new schedule comes out. I don't know if it's out yeah. right now. Have you ever no, came out? I, I saw uh, Jay and Mannion posted on his on his Instagram. So I haven't I haven't checked it out yet. Like, I saw him post the link and and the uh, uh -huh. he made the announcement about it. But I haven't gone and looked at the schedule yet. Let's pick. Let's pick your show. <laughs> Oh, I already picked it. You already picked it? Yeah. Hold on. Can I can I can I take a guess? You can take Tampa. a guess. Tampa Pro. Close. Uh, it was going to be it was going to be Tampa. Chicago? Nope. 
Oh, man. All right. I have no idea. Go ahead. <laughs> you want to take a third guess? It's a big show. Oh, okay. I want to do big shows, man. New York Pro. September 5th, right? You'll see me in New York, buddy. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think you'd go wait that long because, you know, uh, okay, good. For like, I said, like I said, since Dallas got canceled and postponed, I just kind of went with it. You know, I'm just going with it. I'm not going to let it, you know, dwell in my mind and just go, what? You know, I'm not going to be salty about it. I'm just going right. to, I'm going to look at it from the bright side and look at it as, oh, wow. Well, now I have all this time to make even more improvements, you know, to kind of rest my mind, my body even more and just. And like I said, just enjoy it. And that's what I needed to start doing. I needed to start enjoying this again. I needed to start enjoying the process and, and being motivated to, you know, you know, doing everything that I needed to do, like posing and cardio and, and being a hundred percent on the diet, you know, and I'm really feeling good this year, you know, this year, like it feels different. Things feel different this year. And you've been making some posts about how, you know, your motivation is through the roof. And even you can't figure out why. I always thought you were a highly motivated guy, especially, you know, coming from the, the military background and all that, very disciplined. I assumed you were always as motivated as a human being could be to succeed in this your chosen sport. But you're telling you're telling me through these social media posts, something's changed in the last few months. What's changed, you think? Man, just just visualizing, man, just really looking at at what I've got and you know realizing where I'm at in life, you know, I'm having a family now, uh, I'm not going to try to sound all cliche. Oh yeah. Your child's going to come in and life's going to change, but it's, you know, it, it is kind of true. It the way true. I'm looking at it is this is what, you know, my son is going to know me as this is who he's going to know his father as, and I'm, I'm just going to try to make the most of it. And, and, uh, I mean, I, I, I have a very strong belief in myself and I, I really do believe that I, I I can achieve great things if I just continue the right path. If I, if I uh, continue having as as much work ethic as I possibly can in and in and out of the gym, you know, uh, and and just really, really trying to shape my physique in a way that I believe that I can, you know, just breaking things down, you know, specifically per body part and. Uh, like we've spoken about before, you know, just bringing up certain things and not trying to max everything out. You know, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be an open bodybuilding right now. And, and that's the look in open bodybuilding is everything maxed out. And I feel like a lot of the guys in classic are, are sort of that open bodybuilder look just smaller. And, uh, uh, there are very fantastic physiques in classic though. I'm not saying that there's not, I'm saying, I'm saying I'll, you get a you get a big mixture of it, and I'm just trying to not I'm not trying to follow the path of of not really shaping myself rather than just going in the gym and maxing everything out. Like I said, you know, I want to have a certain shape and uh, just striving to get it, man. Yeah. Well, New York Pro, I'm I'm happy you're doing that for various reasons, but like you said, because it's nothing against any other shows that we talked about or or any of these other shows, but yeah. You got the Olympia, obviously the big, big, that's the biggest show, the Arnold. And after that, New York Pro is a very nice title to have. Very competitive show. A lot of other shows, if you win it, people can say, yeah, who was there, though? That's this, you know, yeah. they, they could talk crap that it wasn't that great of a lineup or that that show's not that tough of a show. You win New York Pro, nobody can say crap. Trust me, that's it. You're, you're well on your way. And that's September. That sets you up for the Olympia, which is now... Wow, December nineteenth is the, the last day of Olympia. Uh, that's pretty crazy, huh? The Olympia. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's what it used to be, though, right? Like it, towards the end of the year. Never that late. No, it, never it was. December? It was in October at one point for a while. It was never later than October. Huh. Uh, we never had shows after. Even the nationals used to be October. We never had shows that late. But this will, this will be a precedent. And I predict. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out when I look at the schedule. But I don't think there's going to be any any post Olympia shows. I mean, how can there be? I'm I mean, not sure. Honestly, they're gonna be in, they'll yeah. be in 2021. They'll be next year. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right, cool. New York pro. Very, very good show. The crowd there is just nuts. You will, you'll love that show. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if they like I'm you, excited, they, man, they go ballistic. I'm excited. And honestly, I'm honestly, I'm more excited about doing the New York pro than I was for doing the Dallas Europa. And, uh, just because, you know, I, I don't know, who all is going to show up for Dallas, but, uh, 
I want to compete against the best guys in the world. You know, I really want to test. I really want to test myself. And uh, and it's not just about you know standing on stage next to them. It's about the process getting there. You know, knowing just the fact that I know that it's the New York Pro. I know that you know some of the best guys in the world are going to be there. It's going to make me want to prepare even better. It's going to make me not want to miss a beat, and it's going to it's just going to bring me to the next level. I think and. Uh, I'm excited to I'm excited to get this process started and I'm excited to see what I'm about uh, because I still don't even know, you know, uh, I still I mean, fuck, I'm rambling. I, I, I'm, right. I'm excited, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah. fun for sure. Clearly, you need your post workout meal. So I'll try to wrap this up quick. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last, last thing I want to talk about is uh, you posted a, a video where you looked monstrously large doing some arm blaster curls uh i get questions about that and i don't we don't have one actually we do have one in my gym i, I just saw i shouldn't say i was at the gym but it was for an interview anyway <laughs> for people that for people that don't know and they're curious what 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 does an arm blaster do for you would you recommend people with uh you know biceps biceps that are lagging or something would you recommend that they invest in one of these or 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 what, what what's the deal with the arm blaster yeah i I like it. I don't use it every arm day by any means. It, it's uh, just another way to isolate the bicep. You know, it, it helps keep the it helps keep the elbow stationary. You know, so you're not moving forward or backwards. And uh, it's all bicep. It keeps the el It also keeps the elbow in front of the body. You know, mm -hmm. so there's different ways to work. You know, the bicep. You know, that's elbow in front of your in like in front elbow behind it's going to hit your bicep differently so you'll see a lot of guys when they train arms they just hit they just hit biceps in 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 one direction and that's just from like standing there standing curls a lot of the time standing dumbbell hammer curls but uh it's really just a i'm really trying to focus on hitting every every different angle like i said elbows in front of you elbow behind me uh, and to the side, so you can get all range of the motion, all range of the of the muscle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot, you know, I've. It seems like it would be an advantage for people that have an issue with their with their front delts taking over on any type of barbell curl. Was that was that a problem for you, or have you always been able to really isolate the bicep? Yeah, I mean, I've always. Uh, I mean, I started working out arms pretty hard when I was like 18. So I managed to to get a really early connection with training my arms, and and then uh, I stopped training them for years because they were overgrowing for at the time what I was doing, which was modeling and then men's physique, yeah. uh, where they don't want guys with massive arms. So I just you know I never trained them. They just got worked uh, indirectly through you know push pull movements, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean it, it's. I mean, you want to have some shoulder flexion, you know, because that's going to hit your bicep as well. You need to have like at the top of a of a contraction, like it's just a different way to squeeze the bicep. You know, if your elbows are in front of you and you get to the top, you could still, you know, uh, give a little bit of shoulder flexion, which is going to hit the peak of your of your long head a little bit harder. And I'm not saying like get to here and then try to do that you know that's not that's not going to be healthy for your shoulder girdle your or it's not going to do anything you want to do and like you don't want that but just a little bit of like pushing it forward squeezes you know the peak so much more and if you haven't tried it i suggest you giving it a shot but uh um now i'm not i'm not doing that on every single exercise uh, every single set, you know, this is literally just something that I go with, uh, off of, off of feel and, yes. uh, and very, very, uh, specific to which exercise I'm doing, you know, for the bicep movement. Yeah. That's right. Flex Lewis talks about that. He lets, he does, he believes that to get a really full contraction of the bicep, you do have to let your elbows come up just a little bit. Just a little otherwise, bit. Otherwise they're kind of limited. If you try it guys, uh, anyone watching, you'll see what I'm talking about. So yeah. Well, man, that is all I had for you. Appreciate it. Congratulations on fatherhood. Thank you so much. So, uh, Thank you, got you so a, much, Ron. You got so much cool stuff ahead of you, guy. It's just going to be every day is an adventure. It's going to be yeah. watching <laughs> watching that kid grow and you know try to try to soak it all in because man, before you know I it, am. that kid kid you're going to wake up one day and that kid's going to be the age you are now and you're like what? 
How did this happen? <laughs> what happens? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to think that. I don't want to think that far ahead right now. But uh, you know, <laughs> I don't I'm trying it. to. I'm I'm trying to smell the roses while I can. You know, stop and smell the roses. I actually read a. Someone told me I need to to stop and smell the roses. So makes sense. And uh, now I'm actually trying to just slow my thought process down and 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 live in the now and not. Oh, what's going to happen? What do I got to do to get to the future type of thing? Not rushing through time and all this and that. And, you know, you're you're also fortunate in that your your profession allows you to be home a lot more. Yes. You know, you just really need yeah. to leave the house to go to the gym. Yeah, and exactly. Then, whereas a lot of a lot of a lot of dads barely see their kids for at all growing up. You know, that's that's kind of a bummer, I think, that their dad's yeah. working. No, it, it really is. I mean, I uh, I'm loving it. I love the feeling like if if uh i'm feeding him like feeding him and he's looking at me and just looking at right in my eyes i mean i guess he's looking in, in my eyes i mean i'm not sure how far they can really see yeah. uh because i think like whenever they're born they're they can only see black and white and then yeah. they can't their their depth perception isn't very far you know so uh but every day man he gets he gets more and more aware and uh he starts having a little, little bit more uh of his little personality things come out he starts like uh, I got a picture of him smiling for the first time. He, I was holding That's him right. and he smiles for the very first time. Yeah. I mean, and it's just little things, man, little things like that, uh, that stay with you, you know, and, and it's definitely a wonderful feeling for sure. Never. I mean, everybody always told me, you know, whenever I have a kid, you're going to really understand, you know, what it's like to be a parent or something. I, I don't know the, 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 uh, actual quote or whatever that everyone uses, but, um, starting to understand, you know, what they're talking about. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you'll, you'll find that your friends without kids, eventually you kind of drift away from them because it's just, it's yeah. a different, you're living in a different, you're di living in a different world than they are now. It's, yeah, exactly. It's not exactly. necessarily a bad thing. It's just, that's the way the, it's the way it is. So it's life, man. Anyway, anyway. All right, man. I appreciate you taking the time, Logan. Good to hear that, uh, you're doing New York pro September 5th. Yes, awesome sir. show. You're going to have a great time. Yeah. It's just more time for you to get better and better, and that's what you're going to do. I know you will. So, cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for watching. Ron Line Report with MHP athlete Logan Franklin. We'll see you next time. Yeah, buddy.